Lab Convention in Richmond, Virginia. Today is Tuesday, April 16th, 2019. This is the Visit Advanced panel. I am Jeremy Butler and will serve as the moderator for this session. Our panelists today are Eric Hennerlaw and Mike Sikorsky. So what we're looking at today are three different calls. Um, I am going to be looking at mix. Uh, so of course, uh, my handout isn't quite here yet. Um, I, had a, I had a whole bunch printed out and they're just not in the room at the moment. They will be here shortly. Um, but, so what we're going to talk about is how to play with the call a little bit and how to teach it better and how to make it work uh, in our favor uh, rather than just calling it from the standard old pass to C and mix or uh, Dixie style wave and mix which kind of gets boring after a while. Uh, so what I have here for uh, teaching tips is there's a couple of different, different things that you can use to teach this call. Um, one is that I tell the dancers that you've probably danced this call a lot in the past. Um, just you didn't know you were doing it. Um, a lot of callers will say centers cross run the end slide together and trade. We'd call that all the time. Especially if you're an advanced caller and you're calling to a plus floor. You just use it because you can. Um, so you tell them they've done it before, they already know how to do it. Um, and, it's, and it's pretty simple. Uh, I usually give them the name of the call and then I call it directionally several times when I'm teaching it. Uh, so I just say, we're going to do mix and I'm going to tell you how to do it a few times before we actually get into actually doing it. Uh, there was a whole thing a long a while back, I remember a couple of Caller Lab sessions ago, talking about how you should name the call before you tell them how to do it. Uh, because um, if you tell them how to do the call before you give it a name, then they have nothing to assign the definition to. Until you give them the name, they have no way to classify the information that you're giving them. So give them the name so they have something to go, okay, this is how I do that. Um, rather than this is how I do something, now what do I call it? Uh, it makes it a lot easier to do it that way. Um, I like to tell the dancers also when I'm teaching mix that the slide together part is part of the cross run. Um, it's not actually part of the call technically. Um, the slide together just happens naturally as part of the cross run so that they don't have to overthink the cross run part. It's just part of the cross run to slide together. Um, and I always tell the ends that when they slide together take care to make sure that they sidestep into the middle, raise that inside hand um, if, if that's what they want to do, kind of point at each other with that inside hand to make sure that they end up next to each other in the right place. Um, this doesn't always take, it doesn't always hold. Um, as many of you know, when we do uh, mix and things like cut the diamond, those dancers have a tendency to walk towards the middle and then use whatever hand they feel like. Um, and it's usually the wrong hand, of course. So using the correct hand is, of course, important. Now, on my sheet here, I also have uh, various levels of difficulty. So we want to go ahead and get a square up, because um, we're going to need them for all of these different calls that we're doing here. Centers cross run, new centers trade. 
And that's correct. And they're both the same. What he said was in and slide together and trade, which is really how I look at it too. And if you tell the dancers that, they're going to have a lot better success rate rather than thinking new centers trade. Yeah, that, that, that's, that's very true. Uh, let's have the boys run around the girls. Boys trade, bend the line, pass the C. Let's do a left swing through. And of course, this is our second level of difficulty here where we end up with um, just mixed sex. All the girls are in the middle, they have to do the cross run, the boys are sliding on the ends. But this is still considered standard position for the most part, of course. Everybody mix. Now this position, from a right-handed wave, we've just increased the difficulty level because those centers always want to run to the right. Uh, and they don't like to run to the left. And that's just kind of it. Sometimes you have to preface this with, hey boys, you're going to be rowing to the left. Everybody mix. Go ahead. Excellent. All right, so um, let's see. Let's have the boys run around the girls. And of course, we can mix from here. Any, any general line of four, and this is the fun part about mix, any general line of four, we can do a mix. So from here, obviously, this is pretty simple. It kind of feels like we're doing nothing when we do it, really, because we end up with the same person just on the other end of the line with them on the other side. Go ahead and mix, centers cross run, and slide in and trade, because they're the new centers. And uh, let's have a couple circulate, just because I want you to. There you go. And of course here, again, it's the same thing. Uh, mix, girls cross run, boys slide in, boys are trading. And that's, that's all there is to that. Um, I think the next level of difficulty we run into is when we start looking at tidal waves. Everybody bend the line past the ocean, lock it, and of course a right-handed tidal wave increases it even more. We start running into combinations of these different um, factors that make this call a lot harder. Um, so in this case, the boys are in the middle of these, but they have to go left, and the boys are sliding and trading. It does help to say, to clarify, each wave mix. Go ahead. And then, of course, a big old lefty. Everybody, grand left swing through. Everybody hinge by the left hand. Boy run around a girl. Let's uh, single circle through to a wave. And then we start getting into the funky ones. So here we go. Girls walk and dodge. So now we end up with cross runners that are going past each other. Now this is a really tricky point here because as we have recently um, found in was the last two or three years, it's become an emphasis point that whenever we do a crossing action across the middle and we have to pass somebody, we are passing which shoulder? We're passing left shoulders, right? So because the first, the first motion is half sashay, for our cross run, so go ahead, do that half sashay cross run, and the end slide together and do their trade. So that, of course, has increased our difficulty a little bit more. Now we're going to increase the difficulty a little bit more here because why? Because when my centers slide together or my ends slide together and become new centers, they're facing the same direction. So everybody mix the centers cross run, the ends slide together, and now they have to partner trade which can cause all sorts of problems. <coughs> all right, let's uh, step and slide, quarter in, pass through, and now, of course, here's an even more fun one. Interesting note on this one. Um, if you have the centers doing the cross run, which is, of course, passing left shoulders, the end sliding together and trading, it has a very lovely equivalent of a tag the line face in. So, anywhere you can tag the line and face in and these lines of forwards, so it's an easy substitute to just throw a mix in there. All right, ready? Mix. Centers cross run. Good. And it does help to tell those centers to make a nice big looping cross crossing action because 
oftentimes they uh, they forget to leave room for those centers to get by them uh, when they're doing that. Uh, and that's pretty much the extent of uh, where we want to go at advanced uh, with with this call. Everybody touch a quarter, circulate, boys run around the girls. Uh, let's see, everybody partner trade and the centers roll and the centers pass through. Now here is some place you may not want to go on an open dance floor. Uh, and it's technically not legal until C1 because these are T-bones, um, but it is fun to play with at a workshop, um, and it's very unexpected. So the centers still have to cross run, and remember, I always preface this with, remember a run is a 180 degree turn, so you're looking at a head wall, you're going to be looking at a head wall when you finish. All right. The trick here is also to remind the ends that when they come into the middle, trades happen next to you, not in front of you. Okay? So, the centers cross run, the ends step forward into the middle, and then trade next to them. Which is nasty, but lots of fun. The outsides start a split square through three. There we go. Step and slide, quarter in. And then the last one I have on my list, which is even nastier. Everybody past the ocean. Now let's just get a normal setup here. Quarter through. Boy run around a girl. Go right and left through. Turn a quarter more and the girl's quarter through. <coughs> and we have diamonds. <clears throat> diamonds are nasty. Diamonds are very nasty places to try and do a mix. And I can see people already thinking about, how the heck do I do this? Right, so this is kind of a phantom setup. Can we all agree that the girls in the middle holding hands are centers? So their job is to cross run. And remember, this is also a four person call. You have to stay on your side of the square, don't go across the center of the square. Can we all agree that the boys are ends? points of a diamond are also defined as ends. So, when we do this particular mix, we're going to take it slowly. The girls are going to cross run, they're going to go past each other, and they're going to end up leaving a space for the boys to slide into the middle and trade. And that was a mix. And of course we can do it again here. Uh, from here it's a little bit easier to see the body flow because uh, you know we end up in normal diamonds here. Uh, so the boys, you're in the middle now, you're going to do the cross run. Girls, you're going to be sliding together and trading. Mix. And we're right back to where we started. So again, something you don't want to call cold. Uh, you definitely want to workshop that and play with that. Uh, but that's, that's mix for me. You guys got anything? <laughs> it is a two-part call. Two call, but you know, if you do half of the mix, it's just a cross run. So, <laughs> yeah. I suppose you could finish a mix too. Yeah. Well, the, the, well, the quarter and three-quarter mix are different calls, really. But anyway, so that's that's it. That's it for my mix. And I think they're kind of set up for uh, Eric. Go ahead, Go ahead, Mike. Mike's going to do crossover circulate. Yes, let's do that. Yeah, two crossover circulate. I'll take a second to activate that. <laughs> Why don't you all just uh, rest a little bit because I'll get you back up in a second. Uh, I want to start with the first page of uh, the document. So we're going to go right down the first page. We're not going to go to the second page yet. That just is going to explain things that I'm going to talk about. All right. From experience, I can tell you, and I'm, I'm a sinner in this case, just like you until I figured this out, I can tell you the worst possible way to teach crossover circulate is from a normal two-faced line. And I know that's where we've all taught it from. Because it gives the false impression that crossover circulate is a couple's call. And it is not. 
So I direct you to the sequence on the front page, and then we'll come up here and we'll demonstrate it. Head square through four, or anything that gets them into a corner box where you can alivan left in your home. You can say centers in. Now we're going to learn crossover circulate. The end is going to circulate to the next center, and the center is going to circulate to the next end. But in this case, I want you to find a same-sex back to follow. There's only one choice, and they'll find it. There are, time, uh, uh, there are two or three that don't quite get it, so I'll say that when I say same sex, you only have two choices. I get a few giggles out of that, right? Okay. And of that, there's only one back you can see. And that's where you go fill their shoes. Now, here's the point. If you put centers in, look where the number one man is, or if you prefer to look where the number one lady is, that's fine. They are centers facing out. Then they're going to cross over, circulate, and they're going to hinge. Now for the next one, they are centers facing in. We're going to cross over, circulate, and then hinge. Now, they are ends facing out. And we're going to do the final crossover, circulate. The center's facing in again. And then you get, the point is this, every dancer in that sequence dances all four positions. Every single dancer in the square it has been an end facing out, an end facing in, a center facing out, and a center facing in. They danced all four. At the end of that walkthrough, you can say ends face in, centers back up in your home. Let's do it again. Invariably, somebody has gotten to an ocean wave instead of an inverted line somewhere in that first walkthrough. Do it again. Follow the same sex back. And when you hinge, it's not the same same sex back the second time. <coughs> so keep reminding them, follow the same sex back. Now, the, on the next page, it just talks about, the first part of it just talks about what I just said and how to teach it. So can we get a square up and we'll just demonstrate what that is? I think sometimes it's better to see that. Would that be beneficial or should we just move on? Let's, let's, put, let's put a square up here. Um, don't all jump up at once. <laughs> okay. I'm getting the hand off. Okay, yeah. All right, so the sequence is this. Um, instead of head square through four, I do like the square through four to a, to a center's end. And I do believe that's how, if I was doing a mainstream session presenting center's end and cast out three quarters, that's how I believe the intention <coughs> should be. Head square through four and put center's end. Go ahead, square through four and watch. They've got a lot of wind in the face. It's very obvious who the actives are. Now put center's in. They see it better that way initially. Okay, now, follow the same sex back, cross over, circulate, go. Hinge, follow the same sex back, cross over, circulate, go. Hinge, follow the same sex back, cross over, circulate. If you say it often enough, they'll say it in their sleep. And then hinge, and finally one more crossover circulate, and you dance all four of the available spots. Okay. Ends face in, centers back up in your home. Anytime you teach, it's my preference at first teach, get them home fast. So then you repeat it with the with the sides doing it and whatever. But now we go to the second sequence that I presented, which starts at the bottom, page two. So instead of head square through four for the wing of the face, heads pair off. Put centers in. Hinge. Now follow the same sex back and cross over, circulate, go. Hinge. Cross over, circulate, follow the same sex back. Hinge. Follow the same sex back, cross over, circulate. Hinge. Follow the same sex back, cross over, circulate. 
Now, because you did the initial hinge, we have to undo that by saying, cast off three quarters. <laughs> now the end space in center back up in your home. Okay. Now, just so you see, um, I'll just go through the, 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 I've got some other choreography on this page, so I'll just, before I take questions, I'll just take you through one. Uh, instead of heads square three, four, heads pair off, please. Put centers in. Crossover circulate. Uh huh. So you're all doing this as Eric Kennerlaw, you're all doing it. But I see the question mark as people go across when they're crossing into the middle. Do I pass right shoulders or left shoulders? And I see different answers out there. And the correct answer is right shoulders. So all of them? Not inside or outside, it's right shoulders. When you're coming across the diagram, you're passing right shoulders. That's the point of teaching, it's an individual person call. Okay, so let's see, we did the heads pair off, we did the centers, and we did a crossover circulate. Have we done the hinge yet? Okay, hinge. That's right. I'm not used to reading. <laughs> now, this is a great way to work cycle and wheel. Because it's that's the wheel and deal rule with right hand and free goes in front of the other. Cycle and wheel. And you're ready, there you go. Center swap around. Pass out. Wheel and deal, center sweep quarter back up. <coughs> so that's the way you can use it with crossover circulate. Um, let's see, I was going to do one more. Uh, okay, heads pair off instead of the square through. Obviously, anything that's heads, you can start with sides. Centers in, hinge, crossover circulate, right shoulder passes. Any hand three quarter through, cast three quarters and the new centers trade. Ends pass in, centers back up in your home. Quick little sequences where you can mix crossover circulate after they know it with other things. Now, I want to add something to what Jeremy said which isn't contradictory, but it's additional information I'd like to add. Heads pair off, put centers in. So after they've done all those crossover circulates and they've, done, they've learned transfer the column and attempted to learn chain reaction and done a, few, done a few other things, at this point, very late in the A1 course, I'll say, now we're gonna learn mix. Now, when we did crossover circulate, we right shoulder passed. But in this case, the centers must half sashay and then go to the end. So it feels like a left shoulder pass. It's not really a left shoulder pass. It just kind of feels like one. So that's how we differentiate when it's left shoulder and when it's right. So we're gonna mix. Mix, centers half sashay and go to the other straight after they slide in. And we're here. Okay. Um, this is mix, this is Jeremy's document. <coughs> This is spin the windmill, this is more of Eric's document. Okay, but uh, yeah, Steve, if you would go ahead and pass those out. Okay, I have been, uh, questions by anybody? Comments by anybody? That's all on the paper. I want to thank the square for uh, doing all of that. Hey, Eric. I didn't have five, so I they're, they're passing it out. So now we're going to do spin the windmill with Eric Hennerlaw as soon as he's done. All right. Good afternoon. My name is Eric Hennerlaw. We're going to talk about spinning windmill. Now, we, we have plenty of player printouts too at this point, so if anybody wants multiple copies, we have those. <laughs> because our office is so good. They are so good. They are good. I'm going to take those and put them out on the table for anybody to pick up. No, 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 I, I, I put them out on the edge. Okay. Thank you. I have not handed out my printout on the handouts yet because I don't want you to sit there reading them while I'm talking to you, right? At the end, you can have a copy. That's right. 
So I'm going to talk about the call spin the windmill. I'm going to talk to you as if you're just dancers, not callers. I'm going to talk a little bit about the call, but I'll accelerate some of the information in order to stretch out over time. The call spin the windmill, of course, has two parts. The center's part of spin the windmill and the outside part of spin the windmill. And it's very important to talk about those two parts separately and the, some of the nuances of each of the parts. Are you giving up? Which one are you giving up? Mix, mix, mix. Okay, mix. So in the call, spin the windmill. When I teach you to spin the windmill, um, now I'll draw the analogy here for you for load the boat, but I wouldn't do this for the dancers. When you teach them load the boat, when I teach load the boat, I teach them pieces. I don't, I don't teach the whole call up front. I teach the parts of the call. I teach them the center's part of the call, which is the hardest part, of course. Get them through that part of the call, teach them that, and then eventually I show them the whole call, put the whole call together. The same thing is true for me with spin the windmill. When I do spin the windmill and teaching that to a, an advanced group, I want to talk about the center's part first. I want to talk about what the center's do so they get a feel for them. Um, I'll have them do the swing through, cast three quarter sequence over and over again several times. You know, in roll circuit, whatever, swing through, cast three quarters, and scoot back or something. Swing through, cast three quarters. So they get a feeling of that flow, swing through, and cast three quarter. That's what you want to give them a feel of that flow. Be used to that. No, I'm calling. I'm calling swing through. That's not the definition. No, that's not the, the definition. Of swing slip and cast three quarter. I'm, but I'm calling swing through cast recorder in other choreography to get them used to the flow of what's going to happen in the call. I'm just getting used to the body flow. That's all I'm trying to do is get them used to that idea. Um, because this calls, they're defined certain ways, this is true for a lot of other calls, but they feel like something else. And I'll get to going on what it feels like, and then they'll, they'll do the call, say this is what the call is, da da da. Oh, and it kind of feels like this other thing we did over here, you know. But this is how the call goes. So when the call is spin the windmill, we have, of course, two parts, the center's part and the outside's part. Um, and we know that the center's part is swing, slip, and cast three quarter. <laughs> and to prep them for it, I will do a lot of swing through and cast three quarter actions to get them warmed up to the idea of how that body flow feels. The other thing I would definitely work on long before I teach the call is what, what circulate looks like. Not just, hopefully I've worked on circulates in general for, for my advanced group, but especially what the ends circulate looks like. So again, can we get a square up here to demonstrate some circulates for a second? Circulates are always fun. So we have the heads pair off and star through. We have lines facing in. And so what I'm going to talk to my groups about is about lines and about circulates and lines. And I might do some regular circulates. This is long before I'm teaching spin the windmill. It's a part of the preparatory process over a few weeks, right? Uh, I'll eat circulate. I'll eat circulate again. So they're getting a feeling for it. Yeah, there's a lot of action going on here. Okay. And circulate. And circulate again. So I have a feeling what that circulate looks like. Good. I'll eat circulate once and a half. This is usually where dancers start to, you guys do perfectly, but usually this is where dancers have problems when you circulate once and a half in blind space again, because they don't know where the ending formation is. You see this coming up here. Recycle. But you're getting used to the idea of what the circuit looks like in a general line, and when two dancers come together, how they may collide and crash into right hands, okay? So, um, center four past the ocean. Same one's hinge. Center's run. Good. And it's circulate once and a half. So now, you got a situation here where they didn't hook up with anybody, they're going to break the old diamond on the outside. And this will be a little tricky at first for them because they're not sure where to end up after that, after that circuit once and a half. Center's past the ocean. Uh, wave of six, grand left swing through once and a quarter. Center four, wheel of deal, the other's trade and roll. Center four, sweep and quarter, we got lines over here. Okay, so I'm introducing the idea of circulating once and a half around the outside. So, when I finally do get to the part of teaching spin the windmill, everybody pass through. Wheel and deal. The center step to a wave. I will start teaching it from here from the most common formation, which is a quarter tag. Quarter tag or three quarter tag, both of the most common formations for teaching spin the windmill, for, for calling spin the windmill. And I'll go through the definition, I'll say it very slowly. The centers are going to swing, no, don't go. The centers are going to swing, slip, and cast three quarter. Let that sink in. 
Again, the center is going to swing, slip, and cast three quarters. So go ahead, centers go, swing, slip, and cast three quarter. Good. Feels like swing through and cast three quarter. Feels like it. And some people might actually say, well, listen, and then you can talk about why it's different if you want to. Okay? The outsides will turn the facing direction indicated by me, either right, left, in, or out, and circulate two positions as if they are the end of a line. So, outsides face right. At the end of a line, you're at the end of a line or a wave, same thing. Circulate two positions. Okay? This is pretty straightforward. The dancers will get this because in the end, they'll be able to touch somebody, they'll feel happy about it, and call something else. Right. Left swing through. Good. Everybody extend. So now we have a left hand wave. I'll get to the point. I'll do those a few times, and I'll, I'll go through a, a scenario that kind of standard, easy spin the windmill a few times. Now we have a left hand wave in the middle. The outsides are, of course, facing out. We've got left hand three quarters tag. Again, I'll reiterate that the centers are going to swing, slip, and cast three quarters, and they will get that. They'll get that it starts with the left hand at this point because they understand swing and slip. And I'll say it'll feel like a left swing through a cast three quarters. It'll feel like that if, if, if the group is not grasping on it. So from here, spin the windmill right. So I indicate that the direction right is for the outside dancers only. The center dancers, that, that direction has nothing to do with them. They're going to do their part no matter what. Okay? So now we have a nice right hand wave. So these are pretty straightforward applications of the call. Swing through. Scoot back. And people get this. They, they do get this. Centers run. Quarter tag, center wave, left swing through. Left swing through. Left swing through. Finish the ball here. Right. Turn half by the right. Turn half by the right. Turn half by the right. There you go. So who was here earlier? We asked about quarter tag. Does anybody call it quarter tag? Was that the mainstream section this morning? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So just you know, do the <laughs> extend. I'm gonna do it again just for fun, right? Centers run. Okay. Quarter tag, left swing through. So that works that way to do that. Because there's no, it just flows into it. And it flows in nice, like ping pong circuit, I do that ping pong circuit. Okay. So we have that. So the, the quarter tag and the three quarter tag are pretty straightforward for the spin the windmill. And especially if they're facing right and left. Where it starts to ramp up a little bit in complexity is when we have the ends do something a little different. So if I ask you to spin the windmill in, the ends are going to face in as if they are the ends of a line that doesn't exist. So go ahead and spin the windmill in. You gotta remember they circulate the two positions. Good. Centers run. Okay. So it even gets more complex from here. So now we have the people who are in the centers, they're not actually notion waves. So they have to assume there's there is notion, there's a facing couple rule of this call that says if you're not in, if you're not in notion waves, you just automatically step to a wave, a right hand wave, and execute the call. The ends already have a facing direction. I'm not going to ask them to face in and out, right or left, because they already have some facing direction. So I can just say simply spin the windmill straight ahead or forward. Ready? Spin the windmill forward. And that's where it gets a little hard, because you've got to know where those two positions are. Okay? So you see how they end up T bone like this? Center four counter rotated quarter. Okay. Centers run down the line. Pass through. Okay, wheel and deal. Spread. So I set it up this way where the center four are facing and the ends are facing each other already. Already, We know we're going to have some kind of T-bone formation. The dancers aren't going to like that. They're going to be reaching back to grab somebody. Right? To spin the window forward. You have to know where to stop, where to line that up. So you're right there in front of you. Yes, you're all T bone. And it's really important the formation. I'm going to get out the stage here for a second and show you something. This is not going to be the microphone, but sure. really important here. Uh, for the recording here, what I, what I would do is actually get on the stage, off the stage to talk to the dancers individually to make sure that any formation ends up looking exactly like a two by four formation. Um, it's really important because sometimes the dancers will get far apart, they'll start to create spaces that don't really exist. And, and you know, they understand, they understand where the tightening of the square occurs. The center four counter rotate, and clearly we're in a two by four formation here. There's no question. So they got to understand. They got to keep that formation tightened up. All right, center four to a quarter through the end space in. Everybody extend twice. So now we have a three quarter tag formation. 
And this is the one that often gets dancers because they kind of lose track after they start moving. You know, some bigger calls and dancers start moving, they keep going, and then they kind of lose track where they are. They don't really, they kind of lost track. Right? Spin the windmill out. And this is where you have to remind the dancers they're going to end up back to back with each other on the end from that formation, taking a turn formation. Because they won't. They'll stop when they face each other, right? They'll see each other, they'll stop, they'll face, they'll say, hey, nice to see you. I'm going to get them past each other. There's more to do with the call. Center's run. Uh, cycle in a wheel. Okay. So, pass through. Of course, spin the windmill can be called from here, too. The nice thing about spin the windmill is it can be called from so many formations. Starting double pass through. Uh, uh, straight by formation of three quarter tag, a quarter tag, the lines we showed in many formations you can call spin the windmill from. So from here, spin the windmill out. <clears throat> and the important thing for the ends is to emphasize that they're circulating two positions as if they are the end of the line. Thank you for proving my point, yes. <laughs> I forget, never Exactly what I'm saying, and you're using just like all the dancers I call to. <laughs> so. They forget, they start moving, they forget where they are. Because they see the action going, oh, I'll move over here. I, I think this looks like a good place to stop, yeah. So, so one of the things that I tell my dancers is, if the call is spin the windmill in, you're gonna end facing in. If the call is spin the windmill out, you're gonna end by facing. Out. That's right, very good point. So but thank you for moving that point. So this is where it becomes one of those things where you say, wow, you, you got to be the end of the line. Center four, kind of rotate a quarter. Um, uh, the end is facing, I'm not sure why. Center for uh, quarter through and lock it. Spin the windmill right, but the circulator is only circulating once and a half. There you go. And we have we have of course an undefined formation <laughs> because this is an E2. Right? So in your undefined formation, we have a big diamond on the outside, right? But this is the hard part. The dancers are going to stop. They're not going to stop here. They're going to, they're going to be reaching for somebody. They're going to say, well, who do I grab onto? I've got to grab onto somebody. But you're leaving me out here in space. You're really leaving me out here. So you have to really work the circulates ahead of time to understand where those half circulates end and have them end up, right? Okay. Um, <clears throat> Dora, you girl or boy? Your boy, okay. So center boy slide together a trade. Yeah, it makes me feel happy. The two that are facing directly pass through to face in, the other person facing in, the lonesome girl do nothing. The lines of three pass through and step ahead, the lonesome girl slide together a tray, and all the others turn around, and then everybody squares up. <laughs> a man has to know his limits. Can I interject something here? Yeah. With that end problem? Sometimes you do this too. Sometimes we let them go, and if they stop, I say, if the ends are facing each other, they didn't go far enough. That's right. Yeah, if you tell them that, then they'll go forward past each other instead. If you tell them, hey, you're supposed to be facing out, they'll turn around where they are. They'll turn around. Oh. Um, yes, you do. Are you move boxes for you? Yeah, I got right here. <laughs> Uh, we're going to try a little bit of a, we're going to try a little dance a little bit, okay? Dance a couple sequences, is that all right? Uh, here. Uh, can you get a plug, got a cable? Put a cable on here. We had a cable here earlier. Who's got a cable? Anybody got a cable? One eighth, one eighth? No, no, You have a question? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Gary. You've got Gary Felton, Maryland. What sort of success do you have with everyone do the center part of spin the windmill ten weeks after you've taught it? Ten weeks after. Ten weeks after I've taught it. Yeah. And you taught spin the windmill. Everybody do the center part of spin the windmill. Right. I would probably have to coach them on what that means. Okay. Because that's that's like saying everybody do the center part below the boat, or everybody do the you know center part of some other call. It is coaching them on what that means. So, well, you did a good job teaching. Yeah. Did you put a mic, get a microphone here. Is there another microphone here? There it is. There you go. There you go. Turn on. Just both at the same time. 
All right, so this work. <laughs> And squirt, split square through two. I go chamber. Good. Spin the windmill in. You gotta know where those two spots are. Crossover circulate. Cycle and wheel. Veer to the left. Mini busy. Center four slip. Spin the windmill right. Circulate. <coughs> Do an out of left foot apart. It should be at home. So already you saw the difficulty of some of those positions going around the outside. Heads, do the right on left through. Same one, star through and spread. Spin the windmill straight ahead. Don't touch anybody. Center forward, you will walk and dodge. Split square chain through. Spin the windmill in, but the ends circulate only once and a half. Ends when you meet, hinge. Transfer the column. Scoot chain through. Hinge. Extend. And we're about to left ground. So we had two spin the windmills in, and one of them buried the ends when they only circulate one and a half to get into the columns. Sides, left wheel through. Put centers in, hinge, spin the windmill forward. You want to back up there, Mike, a little bit. There you go, good. Spread. <laughs> Ends, do your part, cast a shadow, but don't spread. Center forward to a left chase. So does everybody have a left hand with the person next to you? Good. Checkmate. Center's left quarter through. Spin the windmill forward. Everybody cast off three quarters. Fan the top. Inroll circulate. Recycle. And about enough ground. Side couple stepped into the middle. Spin the windmill left. The ends, the ends zoom while the center's counter rotate. Mini busy. Extend twice. Girls lock it. Spin the windmill in. Swing through. Flip the diamond. Trade circulate. Out of the hand, the corner of the hall, and then it should be home. Alright, so you have different formations there. You have a T bone or a right ball dog bone formation where they have the I beam finger. Head spin the top. Pink palm circulate. Spin the windmill right, but the end circulate only once and a half. This is again the hard one where you're going to have people out there on the diamond, they're not going to be used to that, right? Center forward to a scoot and dodge. AC DC. Center swing through. All the boys flip the diamond while the girls hinge. All the girls have left hands on the outside. Did you hinge? There you go. There you are. Good. Spin the windmill again. Run and roll. Girl spur through two. Touch quarter. And there's a partner. Turn girls turn back probably. Let's we'll get the right number in time. Alright, here we have another dog coming in here. Side two, left wheel through. Pass through. 
Centers pass through. Same one spaceship partner step to a wave. Spin the windmill left, but the ends circulate once and a half. That's going to be even harder, so be careful there. It's not hard for you to part with the answers. Center forward to a peel and trail. Boys cut the diamond while the girls sing the wheel. Spin the windmill forward. Trade circulate. Real smooth as calm. You want to go on the outside? You want to go on the outside? There you go. Couple circulate. Mini busy. There you go. Extend. Ollie circulate. Alabama with the corner of the hall right there, and then you should be home. Right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. All right. All four couple will go right on left through. We got a couple of just this last one here. Yeah, we do love this college. Head square chain through. <laughs> no, pass in. On each side, do the center's part or spin the windmill. Transfer the column. In roll circular. Each wave, center's part, spin the windmill. Trade circulate. Lock it. Each wave centers part, spin the windmill. Split kind of rotate. Slip. Out of hand with a runner on the hall, and then we should be home right now. Alright. So that gives you some ideas of what we can do with this call, because I try to get it from a lot of different positions and different formations to give just a variety of things in there. The, 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 I-beam or dog bone the formation you have there. You've got the circulate one and a half, um, which you know the dancers aren't really sure where it ends up. So you've got to be very careful in teaching that. Before you do that, always work the components of the calls ahead of time. Show them, you know, work for several weeks or, or months or whatever, how circulates work to make sure they understand what a fractional circulate is. We're talking about A2, so they should know how to do that kind of stuff. That's not that's not a question, you know. You should know how to do different kinds of circulates and be pretty clear on where the any formation is. Um, otherwise, calls like spin the windmill will be very hard. Um, the important thing is that you've got to understand they are the end of a line that may or may not exist. And I, I emphasize that point to them. They, that line may or may not be there, but they have to circulate as if the end of the line, as if they're on the end of the line. Which then always brings up the discussion, how do I know I'm in a line? You ever hear that question? Heads, uh, head star through. Uh, this, this is a okay. spread. Clearly you got a line, right? Clear. Good. Center four star through. Okay. Do we have a line? I don't know. The ends have a line. The centers it could be either way, but I would argue the, the centers are in a column. Okay? And we talk about that, how the column goes up and down the lines are general lines, how it works. The ends star through. This is a very big teaching point before we get into this spin that we know. This is what I do long before I taught the call. We're clearly in columns. So I'm going to tell my dancers before this even starts that 80% of the time they're always going to be either a line of some type or a column of some type. There are other formations in square dancing, but most of your lines or in columns of some type. This is a column, right? Double pass through. They get that. They do get that. Girls turn back. It's still a column. They're clear it's a column. Good. Circulate. Trade and roll. And now they're clear this is a line of some type, right? All the girls pass through. Good. It's still a line, right? Any hand quarter through. Great. Bend the line. Pass the ocean. And this is a great opportunity to explain how ocean waves are really just lines, special kinds of lines, but it's still a line of some type. And they get that, they'll get that. Split counter rotate. No more line, now it's a column. So you get to talk about between the difference between lines and columns. Everybody quarter in. So when you're doing spin the windmill, the ends are working as the end of a line that may or may not exist, regardless of what the centers are doing. Center four step to a wave. So if I say spin the windmill from here, the ends work as the end of a line, even though they're not doing anything with center four, right? All right, ends, uh, center four recycle and uh, sweep a quarter. Ends to your part, spin the windmill, center four, touch a quarter. So they're going to work as if they're the end of the line, right? Four, yeah, four, I'm sorry, four, yes. Good. So you know where to end up. So they get that idea. They have to really work independently and not depend on the center people to do their part. Um, yeah. Gimmick time. Yeah, gimmick time. Okay, so we have a gimmick here. Right. So let's have the uh, centers quarter through and the ends touch a quarter. 
Now, the interesting part about this particular formation here is, of course, if we were to call a spin the windmill from here, if I were to say the outsides go right, it's really just in, right? So in and right from here are the same way, left and out are the same way, because they're holding the same hand in the middle, and that's the way that they turn. So if I want everybody to go around the same way, how do I say that? <laughs> look at your watch. Yeah, look at your watch. Spin the windmill clockwise. Oh. And then decide who's going to go clockwise, right? And they have to decide who's going to go clockwise. 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 They got a goofy watch. <laughs> they got a goofy watch. You start dead yet? That works better. Oh, we have a lot of fun with that one. <laughs> So this group provides a great opportunity to then joke them about digital watches. However, in a more useful way, and I can say that was, that was good, but let's do this. Everybody do a three-quarter tag. Spin the windmill outside go promenade direction. That's easier. Is it? So the point, there's, there's a couple of points about that one. One, Promenade direction is, it, it should be something they know. Okay, then you can re-emphasize which way is promenade direction. Left shoulder in, good, they finally get that. That's the way promenade direction is, left shoulder in. Second, it primes them for knowing how promenade and single file promenade works. Two, I think, very underutilized calls in the basic program. Third, if they ever get on to C1, it'll prime them for how to do a single rotate and a rotate call. They understand which way promenade yes. direction is. So it's very important. So while well, the clockwise is cute, I like that. Uh, people have to think about that, but if you said it's promenade direction, they shouldn't screw that up, and they do. It's a good teaching opportunity. Trade circular. Everybody extend, spin the window, reverse promenade direction. Right shoulder in, R for reverse. <laughs> I stole that from you. So there's another one. Um, everybody bend the line. Um, what was I just thinking? Oh yeah, okay, so uh, let's have everybody pass in. And this is a fun little, little gimmick that I use in combination actually with mix. So, this is fun. Spin the windmill, the outsides go any way you want to go. Any way you want. Any way you want. And the idea is, is they're circulating two positions and it doesn't matter which direction they're facing when I get there because the next call is everybody mix and roll. And that's great. You could tag the line, but sometimes it gets hairy with shoulder passes. Yeah, stuff. that's pretty cool. I like that, Joe. Thanks. That's good. Appreciate it. Does anybody else have anything? Any, any questions? questions? Any questions? Any questions coming up at this point? Anybody want to add anything? Ed, Ed, Ed has one question. Ed Foot. Come get a microphone. Choreographic application? No. <laughs> Choreographic <laughs> review committee? My group is brought up. Red shirt. Red shirt. Oh, here it comes. Good afternoon, Should we do what we want to do? Can I talk on, on one of the other calls, not this? Yeah. I hate to be the bearer, bearer of bad news to Jeremy, but uh, Bill Ackerman, myself, and Tom Miller all disagree with your diamond mix because you're having the centers go to a phantom point and no phantom. You can't just arbitrarily insert phantoms. It has to be a defined point, and there is no defined point in the diamond, so we all feel it's not a proper use of that. And I feel you may be right. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's an interpretation, of, of course. And, I, and of course, I would not touch that diamond until I hit C1, and I have explained phantom positions and the ways to do calls when the formation but you can't even do it. You can't even do it in C1, because you can't just insert a phantom. The only way a phantom position exists are two ways. You say phantom, <coughs> or it's triple box or triple ways. So, so would you say it's it, it's available with the point to point diamonds? No, because there's there space is, for those phantoms. There's space to eat a sandwich, but that doesn't mean it's legal. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, you want the centers to cross run, and there is no cross run oh, point let me, to go to. Let me put it this way: I'm happy. I'm happy to to, to debate the point with you because it's it's not mine. I got it from someone else. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no cross run point to go to. <laughs> For the record, I'm on Ed's side on this one. Well, um, no, no. Okay, uh, Bill Ackerman, uh, come in. I I want to uh, be a little more.
more specific about that. My objection isn't quite the same as his. The point is not whether the centers can cross run legally, but the outsides. On a cross run, they have to slide in. You can't slide in if you don't know that you've been being run around. That's the problem. You slide in when you know you are being run around. If you just point at the diamond when, and other people are doing when, something. Would the words do your part fix it? We discussed this earlier today. No. <laughs> Well, I, but uh, see, but I would say I would say that the words "do your part" would, in fact, fix it because we have very definite centers and we have very definite ends. Okay. Okay. I want to try something else here. Can I get this back? Thank you. Um, Since the highly respected Ed Foot is in the room, do a double pass through. First couple go left. Next couple go right. We all have lines looking in. Do you agree? He's not. Pass angry. through. Wheel and deal. Peel off. <laughs> Did anybody feel that was uncomfortable? <coughs> Did anybody feel that it was not smooth or was awkward or anything like that? No. Terrible? Was terrible? Yeah. Bend the line. Pass through. Wheel and deal. Zoom. <laughs> Anybody feel that was awkward? Or? No. Some people didn't do the zoom, but it's okay. Centers pass through. Everybody pass in. Right on left through. Oh, my God, yeah. Half sachet. Pass through. Peel and deal. Peel off. How did that flow for you? The awkward. So Daryl Dorn says awkward. Anybody, nobody else has an opinion one way or the other? Look good. Does it not? Well, you look good. <laughs> How did it feel? How did it feel dancing? Does anybody have an opinion one way or the other? Okay, bend the line. Pass through. Do you guys know the call peel and trail? Peel and trail from a completed double pass through? Could you do it smoothly? If you, if I, not from here, from a completed double pass through. Okay, good. Wheel and deal. Peel and trail. Okay, was it awkward because you weren't sure how the call worked? I like that five and three. Five and three. <laughs> Doesn't matter, just go over somewhere. Okay. Bend the line, pass through, wheel and deal, peel off. It's a bit of it's overflow. A little overflow? Yeah, it's a bit of overflow. But is it egregious? <laughs> I don't know. Here's, yeah, here's, well, so, so you want severe over step and slide. Bend the, bend the line. I'm calling step and slide, and I don't want to call it. Pass through, yeah. wheel and deal, peel off, tag the line. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Okay. All right, just, just a question, just to see what the flow is like. All right. Our uh, session's over, by uh, the thank way. Thank you very much, all, for coming out today. Thank you for our dancers. Give them a nice hand. All right, we have. And here, I'm going to spin the windmill stuff. I have all the choreography written out if you like to take one, including three slick get outs.